I'm Rod McDonald, and uh, Camp uh, Common Ground on the Hill has um, invited me to tell you a little bit about the classes that I'm doing um, this coming two Traditions Weeks. The first week uh, is virtual, the last week of June, and the and then I'll be at uh, McDaniel College in person the first week of July. Um, both weeks I'm teaching songwriting for self-expression, and I like to teach songwriting in a interactive way. I mean, uh, it's important, I think, to convey certain um, of certain elements of the overall uh, art of songwriting, you know, melody, rhyme, um, meter, tempo, mood, humor, seriousness, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I like to do that within the context of working on actual songs. So m my classes don't tend to start with me saying to you, well, I uh, I think uh, songwriting is about this or that. Um, uh, I do want to inspire you to to write and to and to honor your own ideas, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to try to shoehorn you into some concept of my own. My goal really is to bring out the best in each writer. And to do that, I like to work with uh, your new work, if you bring something in that you're working on, and then we'll kind of share it in class, make some creative suggestions as if we think anything can be better. And usually there is something that can be. Um, sometimes things are pretty close to right where they belong from the very start, but we like to try to uh, give everyone some, not only creative encouragement, but some suggestions uh, on how they can improve the overall work, the goal being really the art of communication through song, so that your ideas, what you want to say, and, and what you um, consider important are what comes through in the song. My second classes that I'll be teaching each week is a series uh, developed from the lifelong learning program that I teach at, at Florida Atlantic University in Florida. I've been um, doing this for some time, and along the way, I've done biographic lectures with video of um, several significant performers in the history of popular music. And we're going to take a look at some of the people who have been both popular and um, important in presenting a kind of form of roots music to the general public. Uh, and these classes will be, uh, each class will be um, more or less a biography of one or two people, um, but they're not going to be uh, repeated. So if you were to take the first week virtually and the second week in person, you would get an entirely two different weeks of lectures. Um, I don't have the list in front of me, but I believe the first week we're doing Paul Robeson, who was a major figure. And in fact, at one time in the 1930s and 40s, the um, most popular, uh, according to statistical analysis, polls, earnings, things like that, the most popular performer in the United States. And uh, his struggle to achieve a certain sense of dignity, dignity for black uh, Americans while nonetheless being popular entertainers. He was a baritone, fabulous baritone singer and a actor, actor of uh, tremendous stature. And so uh, he had no trouble getting popular, uh, but, uh, but also had standards that he wanted to adhere to in his own way. And so these are kind of ideas that we will deal with. I know we're also doing lectures on Joan Baez and uh, John Prine, Harry Chapin, and uh, I think um, I think Paul Simon. I'm not sure which is which in each week, but there you can see in the catalog which they are. And in each case, what I have done is taken a lot of the videos of the artists of their important work and arrange them in generally in chronological order so that you can see the progression of them as uh, artists and entertainers and writers um, through the years and, and as people as they got older and, and, um, and then we discuss, you know, where they came from, what kind of upbringing they had. Uh, in some cases, that may mean religious upbringing, and some it means something else entirely. And uh, and then what they brought to the table as as artists, and how generally they got to be successful. Um, and then once they were successful, we'll sample some of their, you know, high quality work, the be the best videos I can find of it, 
and uh, and then kind of take it out to the end of their lives, um, what they did with their success, how they coped with the inevitable changes that happened to us all as people, and uh, and and uh, in, in the end we'll uh, assess to some extent their uh, importance, their legacy, what they're be what they're remembered for, and um, the quality of their work and and why we consider them important to this day. Um, and these are, um, these were predominantly done as lectures. And so the video will be presented directly on screen. Uh, if you're watching visually, uh, vi virtually and in person, it will be on projected onto a screen with, uh, and in both cases with good sound. Um, and then you'll be, it will alternate with me talking like I'm talking now uh, and presenting some of their biographical information. Um, but it will also have an interactive element. People will be able to ask questions. And, and in some cases, people may even know aspects of an artist's life that I don't know that much about. Uh, it's, uh, I remember one time I was doing a lecture on, a, on a, an early rock and roll star, and a guy raised his hand in the back of the room and said, I was his manager for 12 years. <laughs> and then I had the luxury of asking him some questions, you know, that were much more informed than my own knowledge of the artist who had died before I was born. So, uh, you know, there's uh, all kinds of input in these things, but they're generally pretty informative. Um, I, I can say with some pride that people usually tell me that they really enjoy these lectures and they feel that they learn a lot. So those, that's called the Roots Experience in Popular Music. And that's my second set of lectures during the day. So you can come to me for both lectures, if both kinds of classes, if you want, there'll be, one will be um, us sitting there with instruments on our laps and sharing our songs. And the other will be prepared materials with lecture materials. So they won't at all be the same thing. Um, and I hope I'll see um, some of you folks in my classes and, and, uh, and at meals, and uh, I'm uh, tremendously looking forward to being back at Common Ground on the Hill in person this year for the first time in, I don't know, three, four years, and uh, seeing everybody, um, and uh, hopefully having a couple of midnight jam sessions too. So uh, everybody travel safe, and I'll see you soon, I hope. Um, I'll be at Traditions Week the last week of June virtually, and the first week of July, and also at the festival on July 8th. So come and say hi if you get a chance. Thank you.